What is up everyone and welcome to this video covering this APC Smart UPS 2200. I did show quite a bit about this little box. I say little, this thing is massive. I did show quite a bit about this massive box over at the vlog channel um, while this was still downstairs. And since then, I've found the energy to carry it upstairs and I've decided to cover it on the main channel. Um, we're not gonna put it under its paces and charge it up and give it a full test today because I will not be using this battery backup system while I'm still living here. This is purely for my new office. So we're gonna look at it today go over a few of the features, um, but it won't be a fully in-depth look. You can expect an in-depth look and analysis and test of the output and uh, the amount of time that this can hold a charge, etc. Um, the amount of time it can sustain the output to my equipment. You can expect all of that in the future. So let's start from the very beginning. What is this box in front of you here? And yes, it is quite hard to film such a sort of flat, long thing. That's why you're not seeing much detail in the shot right now, but I will try and give close-ups later. Um, so this is basically a giant metal box that has a load of batteries inside. To be specific, it has one battery carrier. You can think of it as one giant battery with four cells in it, four separate batteries. And it basically slides in the front. I'll show you that later. It doesn't currently have any batteries installed, but I do have batteries. And like I said, we'll go over all of that later. So you get one power input, eight power outputs, and you power all of your stuff with nice clean battery power. The batteries receive a constant trickle charge from the mains, but of course, if the mains power cuts out, it'll switch over to full battery power and it will power your equipment for however long it can on battery power. Now this is a smart UPS, so you can plug this into your system with USB, your primary computer that you're powering with this, and the UPS can tell the system to safely shut down as the battery power gets low. So. The, the, the idea behind this is, is yes, it does power your equipment through a power cut or whatever and protect your equipment from uh, unknown occurrences with the mains power. But if the power has been out for a while and the batteries are starting to run down to a dangerous level that cannot sustain the power that is being drawn by your equipment, it will hopefully send a message to your computer. In my case, it'll be to my server to say, hey man, shut down, safely turn off the hard disks and power yourself down before you run out of battery power, before I run out of battery power. So this is basically a massive safety net and also quite a, a reliable system to use. Now, I would not have bought this UPS if I didn't find this for such a great deal. I was thinking of getting one of those smaller sort of block style ones that can output around 500 watts sustained for about 20 minutes, and I would have been happy with that. But I managed to get this, and APC is one of the top brands of UPSs, I managed to get this for 90 pounds, including delivery. Now this is a rack mount, Smart UPS 2200, and in case anyone doesn't know, that is a sustained output, and when I say sustained, I mean that it can actually output this figure. 1,850 watts sustained. If your batteries are in full health, it can output that sustained power for up to 30 minutes, which is incredible. So yes, considering it's a 2U, it is very heavy, but 2U, relatively small footprint for its output power, it does really pack a punch. Now, the only catch with my particular one is it's not the latest model, so it still uses the RJ45 USB connector, and I do not have the cable. I'm going to have to source one of those, and maybe it's going to be a little trickier to get up and running because it doesn't have a display like the newer ones do, but the beauty of the APC stuff, it is, it is very, very simple. We run the APC Smart UPS 850s at work. They look pretty much exactly the same as this but they're not as big and obviously they've got a smaller a smaller output rating um, I'm not sure what they output maybe 600 watts or something sustained but this one is an absolute beast how will I be using this in my new setup well I won't be using it in this room at all, that is guaranteed. So you'll see a more detailed video about this system when I'm actually moved. But I hope to have a rack mount server set up and this will be sitting at the bottom and it will probably stick out the back of the rack a little bit because it's definitely the longest piece of equipment I have in there. And I don't think I can get a rack that's actually this deep. It'll be far too big and bulky. Um, but 
This is going to power my entire server rack and I'll probably also run a stem out and power the main items from my main computer setup from this as well. There's no harm in doing that um, because I won't be exceeding the output, the rated output of this system and I should be in uh, relatively safe boundaries in terms of the power. Now I'm really looking forward to using this battery backup. It means any little hiccup in the internet, uh, in the power sorry, my internet will remain active. So I'll host every Everything in the server rack off of this including any servers that I'm running at the time at the moment I run one Mac mini as you guys know and that's it but at the end of my um, quest to build a decent server rack I will be running hopefully my Mac mini along with a uh, free NAS box inside of that fractal design case that I have as a giant file storage system and of course I'll be running my external raid array along with uh, an Ethernet switch my modem my router my wireless hotspot spot basically everything related to internet will hopefully still run on battery power in my new home so today I'm not going to show you loads and loads of detailed things about this system I'll just give you a little walk around it and an overview and uh, we'll delve more into it in the future when I actually run it as part of my setup but I just wanted to let you guys know that I've got one of these beasts and uh, let's take a look at it and we will be firing it up at the end of the video and testing it with um, a load of about 300 watts sustained. So before I give you a detailed look at the battery backup itself, these are the battery cages. These basically slide into the front, I'll show you later, and they have four cells in each. One of them has two, they can hold four cells, sorry, because one of mine has two cells, the other has four. When they're fully loaded, they are 18 kilos each. So very, very heavy bits of kit. And there is actually a little diagram that says lift with two people on these batteries. So I do have four batteries in one, two in the other. That means I have two spare batteries and one spare cage, which is quite good. I believe that you have to have the cage installed for the system to run. The, uh, the circuit runs through the batteries. That's the way they work. So you can't sort of hot, hot swap batteries if one um, says, hey man, look, I'm I'm running a bit low you can't just go swapping batteries because I believe it's a circuit throughout all of the batteries while the system is operational but I do hope that out of these six batteries I can make a decent lot of four now none of these are brand new none of them can hold a full charge anymore but I'm hoping that some will be good enough for me now because I won't be using the 1850 rated output or anything close to it I'll probably be drawing maximum about 600 watts that means that these batteries will do better for me than they did for the previous owner anyway, because I believe that the previous owner was uh, filling this thing to the gills somehow. I'm not quite sure how, um, but I think he was, judging by the way that he wrote his write-up. So there they are. We'll slide one in at the end of the video, um, but it makes the system very heavy, so it'll be easier for me to show you around the battery backup without actually having any batteries installed. So like I said, guys, really, really difficult to film this stuff, but hopefully you can get an idea. The front is very, very simple. It's just a plastic sort of grill and you have a couple of buttons on the front. I believe you control the majority of the settings through software with this thing but you don't really need much um, on and off and I guess one is reset or whatever and there's a lot of different LED indicators here to show you what's going on with the UPS itself. Now the real exciting stuff is when you pop off the front plastic cover which you do by pressing these two tabs on the sides and it just pops off like that. As you guys can see the control panel is part of the main unit, unit there at the front but here you have the big boys toys that's where you slide in the batteries and you just plug this giant blue cable into the back of the battery sled and you are good to go so as you can see even though this is a big sort of industrial piece of equipment it shouldn't be that hard to operate and like I said I'm used to operating the UPS smart um, 850s or whatever they are and um, I think this one will be much of the same. So that is the front, that's how basic it is. Let's flip it around and take a look at the back. So apologies for the angles once more, guys. I just can't hold this up, it's way too heavy, so you're all sitting on the floor. And the back is also fairly simple. The main thing that you will notice is this big rated 15 amp uh, IEC input, these sort of diagonal IEC connectors. Now, of course, this UPS having a max uh, output of 1,850 watts sustained means that it will not exceed a 13 amp circuit, so it is perfectly safe to plug this entire thing into a standard 13 amp plug at 240 volts. There is nothing wrong with doing that. Now, it has an input and an output for pass through so that is fairly handy but it also has eight standard 10 amp IEC outputs so this would be to power all of your server gear so you may put 
um, a 13 amp distribution board on one of them and you could power a couple of servers directly or whatever. You basically plug all your gear in there, that's what I'm saying. And then the other important thing is this is controllable by serial or USB, but as you can see, the USB um, connector is via an RJ45 jack, so I'll need to pick one of those cables up online to properly control this. I don't think that you can network this thing. A lot of them are networked, but in my opinion, that's more complicated than necessary anyway. I'd prefer to plug it directly into a server via USB and manage it through the server itself. That's just one less problem that you uh, will encounter. Um, so at least you'll know this will be reliable throughout the whole time. So everyone, it's a couple of hours later and ironically the reason that I'm coming back a couple of hours later is because the battery died on my camera. But that's given me enough time to gather myself together ready to do this little demo for you guys. So this is a wide shot of my floor. I do understand that you can't see everything that closely. It's ridiculously hard to film something that's so flat but so long, especially when I need quite a lot of space to slide in the batteries etc. So I'm going to give it my best shot and we're going to test out this UPS with a load of 300 watts. Now this, for those of you who don't know, this is a 300 watt PAR56 can, um, quite a common light and a good thing about using a light is you know that you're going to get, it's going to be 300 watts, give or take a couple of watts, but something like a computer power supply for instance constantly fluctuates, it depends on all sorts of variables, whereas this can will always be 300 watts because that's what it is, it's a 300 watt light. And also the benefit is all of my power cans actually terminate in IEC connections so it's really easy to plug straight into the back. So throughout this whole experiment, we are gonna use this light. So think of it as a giant light bulb that we're using to test this system with. Um, yes, this is designed for computers, but it gives us an easy point of reference and an easy point of comparison, knowing that this is always gonna be 300 watts. So I'll have this light sitting here in frame, but I'll try not to point it directly at the camera because that could get quite dazzling for you guys. So there is the light and it's gonna sit right around there just so that we can see if it is on or not during this experiment. Now probably the most exciting process of the whole thing is um, sliding the batteries into the front. So let's turn it around. Now one good thing is yes, this is very heavy, but at least it easily slides around. So pulling the front off, you can see the connection there. We are gonna use, of course, the carrier that has the four cells. So let's push this 18 kilo lump over here into the frame. Oh my gosh, it's actually digging into my floor. <laughs> this is wild, guys, absolutely wild. So much bigger than I need, but so cool all at the same time. Okay, get in there, boy, get in there. Here we go. Come on. I hope I've got this round the right way. I believe I have, judging by the little symbols. Okay, okay, come on. What makes this really difficult is I can't actually get my fingers underneath to properly get it loaded in. So I know I'm blocking the view for a second, guys, but bear with me just a second. This is, there we go, there we go. And in you go, go on, boy. Wow, okay, so that is that. That is all there is to it. And of course, plugging it in. Now, does it have some kind of locking mechanism? I have no idea, but there we go. That's plugged in. And surely it goes in a little more than that. Ah, oh, I see, it screws in. There are two screws. Okay, that makes sense. Not sure if you can see from that angle, guys, but there's a screw there and a screw there. Um, they basically undo, that would go back all the way and we would then be happy. Now, probably because that's not screwed in, the front panel will not go on, am I correct? Yes, I am correct. That doesn't matter, we don't need it. So, what I'm gonna do now is plug the whole system into power. I really hope that you guys get a decent view of all of this. I reckon you can see just about everything you need to see. Let's plug this beast into power and also load it up with the power can. So let's plug the power can in to the back of the system. Bring it round. I'm so eager to see what it does, guys. I haven't read the instructions or anything, so I could really mess things up. Okay, 
in three, two, one, I'm gonna be plugging in the power. Three, two, one, go. Holy crap, that was a loud noise. Wow, okay, I don't know if you guys heard that on camera, um, but it just sort of went, made a massive noise, basically. That's all I can describe it as. Okay, so uh, let's point the light a little bit that way and press a button. Well, hey, there it goes. That light is now lit up. Fabadabadoobalus. So it's powering that light, doing its job. It looks to be outputting, whoa. What's it doing now? I have no idea. Okay, so just keeping an eye on that light. It's really, really good to use a light because it gives you a clear picture of what's going on. You can see the change in power in the light output without damaging the bulb, obviously, because this light is designed to be obviously dimmed up and down, etc. So right now it's just sitting there and if we look at the front of the unit, it's giving us a readout of, okay, let's see. One readout is how much battery power we're using uh, or how much charge we have. The other readout must be how much power we're using. So if I pull the plug on this system, it's doubtful that light will stay lit. I've just unplugged it that light is staying lit. There's the warning beep. That's telling us that there's hardly any power left, but it's running that light as you guys can see. It's still running it. It's still running it. Was that beep because it's running out of power? Or was that beep because it switched over to battery power? Well, there's 300 watts being drawn right there and I haven't even charged up the batteries, guys. This unit is not plugged in. Let's plug it back in. And it's just switched from battery power back to mains power. Excellent. That is intriguing, guys. Absolutely intriguing. So, do you know what I'm gonna do now? Is something that I wasn't expecting to do, but why the heck not? Let's get another par can. So another 300 watt can, and I know for a fact that these are 300 watt bulbs because I'm the one that ordered the bulbs and put them in the cans. So let's set up another par can, plug it in, and see if it runs the two on battery power. So this one's got a clamp on it, so it's gonna be a little more awkward, but let's see. Push that one over a bit, put that one there. I'm gonna plug this straight into the back, guys. Not sure if you meant to do a drastic change in load like this, um, but there we go, okay? So it's powering both of those power cans. So that is now 600 watts, and you can see that both of the lights are lit on video. Let me just move that computer monitor slightly back, just so that it doesn't melt. Now, what I'm gonna do is unplug the UPS once more, let's see if it runs 600 watts on battery power without even charging the batteries. Three, two, one, go. Check that out, guys, check that out. So it's running on battery power. It's telling us that it's got one bar out of five of charge, which is, which is interesting. But what I'm gonna do is leave it, let's have a look. Oh, okay, yeah. Barely any charge, that's why it's continuing to beep. That is the battery level indicator. So if we plug it back in, you guys can see that we've switched over and we are, we are charging. So that is the load indicator. When we were running one par can off of this, that's why that level wasn't working. I know you guys probably can't see the display that clearly, but basically on this side, it's now showing us that we are using one out of five bars load, so hardly anything, and it's showing us that we have one out of five bars of charge. Um, so that is a very easy system to understand. The test button, I'm not quite sure what that does, but as you guys can see, let's yank it out one more time. It's probably not good to do it um, repetitively, but boom. But it's complaining about charge, that's okay. Plug it back in. 
so far, guys, I am extraordinarily pleased with this system. Now, one thing that I have noticed is there is a bit of a noise, like a humming noise coming from it, um, but that's okay. Let's power it down so we can power those lights down. And that's all there is to it. Okay. Very interesting. Very interesting indeed, guys. Now, I've learned quite a lot in this small segment and I am very pleased to see what this can do when the batteries are fully charged up. So, I hope you've enjoyed my first little look at my new UPS. As you can probably tell, it's quite a tank. That's a 600 watt load right there and I haven't even charged up the batteries. So, very, very pleased with this bit of kit. Cannot wait to use it in my new office. Expect more videos on it in the future. And as always, I will see you in the next one.